Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. Today's video is all about using insect dust. I've been talking about it, people have been asking me a lot of questions. Insect dust is not diatomaceous earth. That's a silica fine powder, it comes from the bottoms of oceans usually, or dried ocean beds. It's good to use for beetles on leaves. That DE gets into the joints, grinds the insect down, it works. However, it's not effective against um, any kind of caterpillar or type of worm or anything like that. There's no toxins or poisons. It's, it's physical. It grinds the shell down of the beetles. Insect dust is more of any of these products. Seven, this one's called eight. That one's Captain Jack's dead bug dust. That's what I use. That's what I recommend. Um, it's organic. But any dust, these dusts kill all kinds of different insects. It means it's going to kill good and bad insects. So you have to use it in a thoughtful way so that you don't kill off your pollinators and your bees, like right in there. So how do I do it? And this is what's most important about this video. I dust the outer leaves away from flowers. I bottom prune. This whole uh, cucumber setup here was pruned a while ago. I'll link that video. You can see cucumbers are coming in tons of flowers, pollinators everywhere. So, first thing I do is I bottom prune out about, I don't know, 10 inches, 12 inches from the bottom here, and I'm going to put dust down where the stems come out. And you can see right on cue, the bees are getting into the flowers. You have to remove, well you don't have to, but if you don't, you're going to kill the pollinators, the flowers. These flowers and leaves will all come back. There's a little cucumber that was probably pollinated that can stay there. As long as the flower is dried, you leave the cucumber on. So once the flowers are removed from this vicinity, you can put whatever dust you want down around the base. And your crawling beetles, it's a little hard to do with one hand. and insects that come to the plant from the ground will crawl through that and die off. And you've created a barrier by removing the leaves that aren't going to affect the bees or the pollinators. If I were to do that down here, there's a lot of leaves. So again, you clear out the space. If the cucumber has a dying flower on it, that's okay. You can leave that you really want to look through there and remove all the flowers and you want to come back and keep an eye on it because as your dust sits there if it doesn't rain or you don't wash it off if flowers open it's going to get on the pollinators and that's what I put Ooh, now that was a lot watch the drift going over that way so now I need to get in here and I'm going to remove this cucumber, even though it probably is going to be viable. I'm going to remove that cucumber. I'm going to remove that flower. So you want to keep the flowers away. And I think that makes sense. All right, so that's set up. Now, when you remove the flowers, you can keep the dust there if you want to, as long as you want. The bees and stuff aren't going to go to that. That will just give you a nice protection against insects that crawl up. Vine borers or insects that may come down the stem, bore into your plant, or eggs that are going to be laid onto there. It's going to vary on insects. That will give you protection. Now, typically what I say is for like um, cucumber beetle, put it on the outer leaves, just like that. You don't need a lot of dust, and you would just target a couple of the outer leaves and I would do this in the evening when the pollinators go away and do it again and, and rinse it off in the morning early morning and then do it again in the evening do it a couple of nights that will take care of lots of beetles and insect problems now when you wash it off of course you're going to be washing off what's down there and you're going to have to replace it, it depends on your strategy and it depends on what kind of insects you get if you get mostly insects that come through here you don't need to rinse it off. My point being is when you rinse this off, you're going to rinse that off. 
But this is a great way to manage your cucumber plants. Let's go over to the squash plants because the principle is the same. And again, you can select whatever dust you want, organic, like Captain Jack's that uses spinosad, or some of the uh, processed chemicals use other chemicals. Learn about them, pick whatever you know you're most comfortable with. This is a zucchini plant that I pruned heavily earlier in the week. I did a video on that. Now, with the squash, I do still recommend putting the dust on the outer leaves late in the evening, rinse it off in the morning. But with squash plants, you can get away with leaving it there. You know, if it gets windy, it's going to blow the dust around. You know, that's again, that's up to you. But by putting on the outer leaves, it does stay away from the flowers. And this is an opportunity for insects that are that you don't want to land on here and walk around. Typically, your pollinators don't land on there. However, a good like hunting insect that might be looking for other insects could land on that. So again, I just want you to understand the risks. Coming into the center, I've moved a lot of the flowers. There were male flowers right there. That squash back there is browning off because it wasn't pollinated. And then I'm just dropping the dust right in here. Good for squash bug management, although I find they're really hard to kill. You put the dust in there. Anything that's really crawling up on here, most of the time will be a negative insect. But again, you're still going to possibly kill um, positive or, you know, beetles that you want in your garden. There's just no way around it. But that's the setup that I recommend that is the safest. If you choose to use dust, some of you won't have to. Some of you will have to use dust because you just have so many problematic insects, it doesn't work. Let's go to another cucumber. Here's another plant that I did prune this week also, and you can see all the production of the cucumbers. That one's ready to come out. Same idea, we would come over here, look into where the main stem is, which is right down there, and start removing all the flowers, the weeds too. I like to remove the leaves. And then right in there, from this point all the way down, I would put dust and I would put dust around there again to manage the plant. And then some on, and on the outer leaves. And again, you don't need much, especially for the cucumber beetles. Now, for me, I get cucumber beetles. That's what I use the dust for. Let's see if I can get that on the stem. This is a little hard, even though they give you this nozzle. There we go. I get the cucumber beetle, so that's what I use the dust for on my cucumber plants, obviously. My squash plants, I get squash bugs, I have to really remove those eggs, look for squash bugs, squash them. Um, the dust helps a little bit, but I get the vine borer. And if you don't know what the vine borer is, it's a moth that's about this big. It has clear wings, the upper body is black, the bottom half of the body is orange, and there are black circles on the orange right on top. You can't miss it. The vine borer lays eggs on the leaves, on stems, they hatch. They get into your plant stem, they work their way down. Sometimes the eggs are laid down there. That's what I use the dust for, is to really control the vine borer. And it helps, it doesn't stop them 100%, but I have a whole lot less loss. Again, right in there, remove all the flowers, put the dust down, any bad insect will crawl through there. Now, the whole point of this video is to show you how to apply and use dusts so you understand that insect dust kill good and bad insects. In your garden, you're gonna to have to make decisions about what you wanna use. My opinion is, do your best to not harm insects, but at times if you want production and you wanna harvest and you're eating the food and you're living off the food, you're gonna to have to make decisions that could harm the good guys. Do it in a respectful way, reduce the risk, you'll get a good harvest, Feel better about yourself. Thanks for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therestedgarden.com and please subscribe and follow. I'll be showing you how I take care of this entire garden for the rest of July, August and start. I'll start planting cool weather crops end of August and take care of them through September, October and November. Again, thanks for watching.